So is Miss Nichols. Miss Nichols is our principal. That's somebody you need to know. Here's Mr. Pike. He is our assistant principal. You want to wait, Mr. Pike? There you go. All right, we are really excited to have you all here today. Are you all excited? Yes. Yeah. Anybody nervous? team leaders. Um, your other teachers that you might have, if you have social, if you have social studies, you will. Um, you could have Mr. Jadlowski or Ms. Bales. For math, you could have Ms. Gibson or Mr. Reynolds. For language arts, you could have Ms. Todd, Ms. Vickery, uh, Ms. Norris, or Ms. Gillock. Um, for science, you could have me or Ms. Wigington. Um, so quite a few different choices of teachers. We're going to tell you how to survive East Harden sixth grade. I know some of you are nervous. It's new. It's brand new. Um, good thing. Guess what? We know nothing about your elementary career. So, if elementary wasn't great, August 8th, you've got a chance to rewrite your story. Because you come in with a clean slate. We don't know anything about you. We don't know any good or bad. You are starting over on August 8th with brand new people. So if you, again, had some behavior issues, you've got a chance to change that. Come in and start acting correctly, fixing that reputation. So you get that chance. Um, behavior is always a big question. We operate on what we call the MARC system. You may have gotten points in elementary school, clipped up, clipped down. We give marks. Marks are kind of like, uh, after I've warned you 100 times to not do that, then I'm going to say, I'm giving you a mark. Um, all the marks that you get come to she or I. Um, after you get two marks, you're going to see one of us. We're going to come get you. If Miss Todd or I have to come to your room and pull you out, it's not to say hello and have a good day. It's not a good thing. Um, we're warning you that here's where you're at. Um, after the third mark, you get a note that goes home to tell your parents exactly what you got your marks for and exactly what's going to happen. Uh, if you don't bring that back to me the next day, then I get to make a happy little phone call to your parents and explain to them in person what's going on. And I do follow through. I do call home. So marks reset every four and a half weeks. So you only have to go four and a half weeks. Behave four and a half weeks before everything starts over. Um, we do rewards every quarter, and it's based on your marks. So if you don't have any marks, you get a certain level of reward. If you've got a couple marks, you get a certain level, and it goes like that. So you get, get things for behaving. You are rewarded. Um, we give out Rebel Bucks. I didn't mention that last time. You'll get Rebel Bucks and you can spend those Rebel Bucks. We have a Rebel store. Um, you can get popcorn and coke for those Rebel Bucks. You can get all kinds of things. So the Rebel Bucks is like a positive reinforcement type thing that we use. You will be signing up for two clubs and we have club day during the day. So you'll meet those clubs during the school day which is a lot of fun. Um, lots of clubs are available. You'll sign up for those the first couple weeks. Um, and we meet those about once a quarter, no, once a month, about once a month, and you'll meet with your club. So those activities, we do go on field trips, we have um, field day, we have all kinds of activities, hat days, 
We have a Rebel Pride Rally at the end of every quarter where the whole school is in the gym. And we do games and competition. Um, we compete for Team of the Year. I'm really competitive. We lost Team of the Year last year by one point, and I'm still not over it. So I have high expectations for you all that we are going to win Team of the Year. And I'm going to push you so that we win. Um, but we do all those things. So we have a lot of activities coming up. We have a lot of fun. We do work. I'm not going to say it's all fun. There are boring parts to middle school. But for the most part, I think it will be good days. Where am I at? Uh, we sell snack. Um, for, oh, yeah, the food always gets you. Um, we sell snack on Fridays during 6th and 7th period. You will come to my room and sit. Now, it's healthy snacks. You're not going to be able to buy honey buns and Twinkies. But we have chips and Power Aids and waters and, you know, granola bars, different things like that if you're hungry. We use that money, it comes back to you. Because when we do activities, we try to help cover your cost on field trips, we try to help cover your cost on other things, so that money comes right back to you. We use that. When we buy you ice cream for a reward, because um, you're going to get a punch card, and the punch card allows you to leave class, like say Mackenzie forgot her math folder, she can get a punch on her punch card and she can go get it. Those that don't have punches, they get ice cream when it's time. So we use that money to buy the ice cream to give you back for those type of things. All right, questions about snack, fundraising, any of that stuff? All right, agenda books. How many of you got an agenda book last year? How many of you still know where it is? How many of you never opened it? Okay. You will get an agenda book. Um, your language arts teachers will be doing something with that agenda book. I'm going to be real honest with you. I'm going to be real honest with you in saying that for the first time, you are going to have seven different teachers, seven different classes. That agenda book is probably going to become pretty important because I do not necessarily communicate with Ms. Todd on when I give my tests and my quizzes and my projects. I'm just going to assign them like I do. So you might have a couple things due on the same day. It's not like elementary school. So that agenda is kind of your organization. We do not require you to take them home and get them signed um, unless we need to, if we're seeing an organizational problem. Yeah, attendance, you need to be here. There's a big giant yellow thing that passes your house every day for a reason. It's bringing you here. Get on it and come here. Um, three unexcused absences, you're already considered truant, which means your parents are getting a letter. Here's the bad thing about sixth grade. Judge Hall comes here once a quarter, and he starts putting the responsibility on you, not your parents. You know the big yellow thing is coming. You know what time you need to get out of bed, and you know you need to get on that big yellow thing. So Judge Hall puts it on you. So you then become truant, not your parents. So don't do that. Um, you're not going to want to miss what we do. We do a lot of things. A lot of things happen. Um, now we know you're going to go to the doctor, things are going to happen, and you're going to be sick. Don't come to school sick. Come, don't come to school sick. My second thing is please wear deodorant, but we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> don't come to school sick because you don't want to get anybody else sick. Um, but you do need to be here. So you can have doctor's notes. Your parents can still write you a note. All of those things are still effective, but don't make it ex excessive. Because you need the information that we're giving you. It's going to help you, I promise. Um, Ms. Ms. Todd's going to get in dress code in a minute. Um, and I want to add to the dress code, just like I said a minute ago, I am demanding that you wear deodorant. <laughs> Take a shower. <laughs> Try that. It works. My room does not have good air conditioning. Yeah, yeah, I know you've got that face. You should be in there with 30 kids that smell. That's when you have that face. So if you want to keep me in a good mood, wear deodorant so I don't have to spray Febreze in my room all day. Um, but it is going to be a little warm. We don't have the best HVAC system. And you know they're building us a new school. So they're not overly you know, interested in overly repairing anything. They want to just kind of get us through. All right, now to Ms. Todd. Right, cell phones. Guys, cell phones. Raise your hand if you have a cell phone. Okay. Sweet. Uh, the good news. You are allowed to have your cell phone with you at school. Uh, however, our rule at school is that it needs to be turned off and put away 
at all times throughout the day? Hold on one second. I might answer your question. Um, so that means it needs to be maybe in your book bag or in your locker put completely away. So in your back pocket doesn't count. It needs to be put all the way away where I don't see it, nobody sees it throughout the day. Okay? We understand after school you might have to call your parents and arrange for them to pick you up or whatever. Uh, so you can have it with you. We're just not supposed to see it. Okay? Um, that is the same school-wide. So when you come to school in the morning and you're sitting in the gym, that rule still exists. When you're in the hallways, no cell phones. When you're in PE, no cell phones. Cafeteria. Uh, cafeteria. Uh, the only exception is a teacher might have an activity where they want you to use your cell phone. So if I'm playing Kahoot and I say, hey, get out your cell phones and pull up the Kahoot, that's fine. But you need to wait for the, peer, or for the t uh, teacher to give you permission to do that. Okay? Make sense? Did you are know? allowed to have regular backpacks. Um, and you are allowed to bring them to class if the teacher allows it. For example, I teach science. If we're going to have a lab that day, I will tell you you're not allowed to bring backpack that day. My aisles have to be clear because there are times that I have to get to the front and the back of the room. You know, if we have a fire, I need to, you know, spray you with some, you know, fire things if you're on fire. Um, I need to make sure, um, no one's ever caught on fire. I've been teaching 31 years. So far, so good. Let's hope this year isn't the year. Some teachers um, have smaller rooms, they do. so they might not want you to bring your backpack because yeah. it causes a tripping We're hazard. Old. I'm gonna break a so <laughs> ask your teachers, each individually, am I allowed to have my backpack in here? Or they'll probably tell you, yes. Correct. Um, Makeup work. If you are absent from school for whatever reason, you have however many days you were absent to make that to make that work up. So if you missed one day, you have one day to make up your assignments. If you miss three days, how many days would you have to make it up? Three. You have three days. Um, and it is your responsibility to go to each of your six or seven teachers and ask them, what did I miss yesterday when I was absent? Okay, we are not going to come find you and tell you what you missed. You have to come to us. All right? Um, let's see. Okay, I think we're ready for dress code. Okay. All right, guys, dress code. All right, guys, clothing and accessories with inappropriate messages or pictures are unacceptable. Footwear and shirts must be worn during school and extracurricular ac activities. Don't take your shoes. You have to wear shoes. I know, that's, that's insane. But yeah, you have to wear shoes. Right <laughs> um, your midriff or belly should not be showing at any time. No low cut or off the shoulder tops. No see through or sheer fabrics. No hats or hoods on your head. Uh, the exception to this rule is that sometimes we have a hat day. Um, maybe like on a day where we have a rally, we could say you can wear your hats. You have to pay a dollar uh, to wear your hat. And yeah, but only on those days are you allowed to wear hats. Okay. Um, holes, tears, or rips in your pants are actually okay. However, the rule is that you cannot have any skin showing above the index card rule. The index card rule means, you guys know about how big an index card is, right? Yeah. About this big. So now place that above your knee right here. That line, that's where you are not allowed to have any skin showing above that line. Okay? So if you're ever curious, just take an index card, place it right here, and you can't have any skin showing above that. If you have some pants that have holes in them up here, you can maybe wear leggings underneath. Uh, or get some patches and patch those, but you cannot have any skin showing up here, okay? Um, this rule is the same as far as like dresses and skirts. They need to be at that line as well. So use an in index card in the morning, check and make sure that your shorts, dresses, skirts uh, cover you to that length. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Um, girls, do you have leggings that you love to wear? Yes, they're awesome and comfortable. Uh, the rule with leggings, and this is different from in the past, the rule is that your top, whatever top you wear with it, it has to cover your behind all the way, and it needs to cover that same length all the way around. You guys know how sometimes the shirts have long backs and short fronts? That's not allowed. You need to have it cover you that length all the way around. Does that make sense? Okay. Cover the behind. That's all we ask. Okay, all pants must be worn at the waist, no sagging. 
Uh, no pajama pants, nightgowns, house slippers, don't carry a blanket. That's very strange. Don't do that. Any item that disrupts or distracts from the class is not allowed. Okay? Shoes. Oh, good question. Uh, she asked about shoes. So you might have had a school that you couldn't wear like flip-flops or slides. Is that what you're asking about? That's okay, Pierre. You can wear flip-flops, slides. Now, we have 253 sixth graders. And you're all in one hall. And it's a very small hall. And if you're wearing flip-flops, I can promise you somebody's going to step on them. That's a promise. It's going to happen. So make sure that they are, you know, in pretty we're, good shape. Yeah, we're comfortable. Good. If they break, they break. You're just kind of stuck with it. You are required to dress out for gym. Um, if you are already wearing shorts, but see, gym has different dress code requirements. Like you're allowed to wear shorter shorts in gym than you are during class. Um, so a lot of people bring stuff to change into. But if you're already wearing shorts and a t-shirt, you are welcome to do gym in what you're in. But if you're wearing jeans, you do have to bring have stuff there to change into. Um, all right, guys. So we have periods here. You're going to have seven periods. They are 53 minutes long, is that correct? Except language arts. Except for language arts, which basically is two periods right in a row. Okay? Sorry, so you have language arts. language arts is the best class. So you're going to love that time, and it's going to fly by. Uh, you have language arts. You have science, social studies, uh, math. Enhancement. Enhancement. Hold on, she'll enter in a minute. And related arts. Or band. Or band. Enhancement. Is that cover band. <laughs> yeah, your related arts is different, not like elementary school. You know how you went to music on Mondays or PE on Tuesdays. You have PE for a whole nine weeks. Then you switch to a different one for a whole nine weeks. Yes. Is lunch for 53 minutes? Nope, 20. No. 20 minutes, and it will be during your fourth period. So whatever right. fourth period you're in, you will leave for 20 minutes, come back, and then the time will resume. So after the bell rings, you have four minutes to make it to your next class. So that includes going to your locker, going to the restroom, or whatever you need to do. You have four minutes. Uh, the good news is that most of your classes are in the sixth grade hall. So it's a short distance from one class to the other, except for your related arts classes like gym and music. Those are in different areas of the building. So that one might take you a little bit longer to get to. So you just have to plan for that and know, OK, I need to hurry up and go to art really quick. We are very patient at the beginning of the year, making sure that you're getting where you need to be and knowing what you're doing. If you're ever confused about where to go or where it is, just ask one of us and yep. we'll let you know. All right, you guys are going to go on a scavenger hunt. And it's the, pur the purpose of this is to learn your way around the building. I'm Mrs. Wigginton, and I'm one of the science teachers in sixth grade. Um, anyway, you're going to be divided up into groups and you're going to have a clipboard and a set of questions. I'm going to tell you which group you're in by a number, okay? Now listen carefully. This is the tricky part. When I hand you the clipboard, the number that, of your group is going to be circled. The question of your group number is going to be circled. So let's say you're in group five. Which question would you have circled? Five. Five. Anybody know why that might be? That's where you need to, that's where your group needs to start the scavenger hunt, is on that question. So that the whole bunch of you are not just like following each other in a herd, okay? So group one will start with question what? One. one. And group ten will start with? Ten. Ten, exactly. Okay. Uh, where would you go to use a musical keyboard or a recorder and hear the sounds of Beethoven? And what do you think? Uh, we think it's a music room, and then it asks what color arrow there was, and ours was black. Where would you raise the flag, see a fish, or possibly eat lunch on a nice day? Okay, what do y'all think it is? The courtyard. Where would you go to work with Clay and see Monet? And what do you think it is? The art room. Where would you go to access student email, type a paper, or get information for a school assignment? And what do you think it is? Computer lab. And the color arrow is pink. Okay. Where do rebels go to show their school spirit, wait for school to start, or improve their physical fitness? And what do you think it is? Um, the gym, and the color arrow was orange. Where would you go to find a book to read for fun or research about Kentucky history? And what do you think it is? The library. The library. Uh, where would you go if you were feeling ill or to take medication? And what was it? 
um, nurse's office. Where would you go, go to get tips on study skills to get help for you or your family or sign up for a babysitter's training course? And what was it? Um, it says, where am I, the youth service center, and then what color arrow, arrow was green? Where would you go to, to get a new schedule or talk to someone about your grades? Counselors. We, we are here at East Hard Middle School with sixth graders and they are practicing opening up their lockers. And we've got some prizes that we're giving out to the kids when we have our races to see who finished first and we're going to give them some prizes. Okay, now see when you went back, that canceled it out. If you miss it, you have to keep going to the right. Okay, so do it again.
St. James. Well, once we get around, have a seat and whoever sits down first. Okay, so we got a 